Hey everybody, welcome back to Running Gun. I'm JT and I'm here with my light on a stick because today we're gonna to be talking about portraits and portrait lighting because I think lighting is probably one of the most important things to portraits. It establishes a mood, a vibe, and it can change the whole feel of your shoot. So I'm gonna give you guys some lighting terms and techniques that you can use to take your portrait game to the next level. So before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you're seeing my videos every weekend and let's get right into it. So one of the most important qualities of light that we need to talk about is hard or soft light. And the way to tell the difference is by looking at the shadows on your subject's face. If the shadows are super soft between the light tones and the dark tones, that means you have a soft light. Now, if the shadows are super crisp and create sharp lines on your subject's face, that means you have a very hard light. Now, how do you create a hard or a soft light? Well, the closer your light is to the subject, the softer it's gonna be or the larger your light is to your subject, the softer it's gonna be because it's filling in all of the crevices and wrinkles and shadows of the face and it makes everything look nice and soft. So if I had a huge soft box or if I have a smaller light and I put it super close to my subject, it's gonna be a very soft light. Now, alternatively, if I have a super small light, it's gonna be harder shadows or if I have a large light and it's far away like the sun, because all of the light rays are coming parallel, that's gonna make my shadows super sharp and hard, and it's gonna be a hard light source. So one of the first lighting techniques I wanna show you is called butterfly lighting. The light is right up above the subject's eyes, pointing down their face, and it usually creates a little baby shadow down here, it kinda looks like the wings of the butterfly underneath the nose, and it's usually very soft, very flattering, and great for portraits, especially of women. It creates a nice soft look, fills in a lot of wrinkles and shadows on the face, and it's a super simple and versatile lighting technique to use. Now, if this light is a little bit too soft for you, you can use a bounce card or something as simple as a notebook. Hold it under your subject's face, and it just comes in and it fills in some of these shadows underneath the nose, in the eyes, and that's just one way to get a little bit of a softer lighting ratio and get rid of some of that heavy contrast in the portrait. It kind of looks like a clamshell, which is why it's called clamshell light. You have your light coming in at an angle right up here on the top, and then you have your bounce card right underneath your subject's face, aiming kind of at another 45 degree angle, just like this. I have my light here coming down at about a 45 degree angle from the top, and I can take my bounce card and hold it at about a 45 degree angle under here, and you can kind of start to see the clamshell. The next lighting technique we're going to talk about is called loop lighting and it's called loop lighting because it creates a little shadow loop right here to the side of the nose slightly to the side and slightly below and that's because it's very close to the horizon line let's say it's the sun at sunset or sunrise that would create a loop light if you're looking slightly off center of the sun this is another light that's great for filling in shadows and wrinkles and they use it all the time in fashion so the next lighting technique we're going to talk about is called Rembrandt lighting. And the light is over here, kind of at a 45 degree angle this way and a 45 degree angle in front of me. And what it's doing is creating this nice little triangle in the corner of my left eye. And I can do it on either side. I can have it on this side. Again, 45 to the front and 45 up. And it creates this nice soft little triangle here. It creates the nice little catch light in this eye and a little catch light in that eye and catch lights just add a little bit of pop and a little bit of light to your subject so when you have your light closer to the horizon you get that nice little catch light in the eyes but Rembrandt I absolutely love it it came from the painter Rembrandt and that's how he painted light in his images and it's an absolutely great moody classical technique that you can use to make your portraits look awesome now the fourth lighting technique we're gonna be talking about is called split lighting. And it's called that way simply because it splits your subject's face directly in half, and half is left in shadow, and half is left in the light. And if that's way too contrasty for you, again, you can grab your bounce card or your handy dandy notebook and just throw it in here and you can see it fills in some of the shadows and it turns that lighting ratio down just a little bit and creates a little bit of a softer look on your subject's face. So two more terms I'd like to throw at you guys is short and broad lighting. 
And that means, let's say your subject is turned slightly to the side over here, and you see the broad side of my face is lit, and the short side of my face is not lit. This is called broad lighting. Now, if I were to turn this way, and the short side of my face is lit, and the broad side of my face is in shadow, this is called short lighting. And both of these techniques work really well with split lighting because you're splitting your subject right on the face there. Now, most people say they like short lighting the best because it looks a little mysterious and contrasty. And if it looks too contrasty, you can always throw in that bounce card again and fill in some of those shadows. Now, another term you might hear when people are talking about lighting is called a kicker or an accent light. So let's throw on our accent light over here in blue. And I use this technique all the time in my videos just for creating some dynamic light. I have my main light over here. This light could be the sun. So technically, you only need one artificial light source. You can always use the sun and use your own light to create an accent light or a kicker. It's just an extra little light to fill in some of these shadows. It's really cool when you can throw some color on it, especially when you're using speed lights. Make sure you guys check out my speed light color hack that I'm gonna link to up top in the video and down in the description. And there's just a bunch of different ways that you can use an accent light to make your photos look awesome. So another type of light I absolutely love using is a rim light or a hair light. Again, you can see I have a blue gelled light and in portrait photography, the hair light just kind of lights up the hair. It separates your subject from the background. And sometimes you'll hear it called a rim light in product photography and it just kind of lights up the rim of your product. We can shut off our main light here and now you can see exactly what the hair light does to the subject. It just creates a little bit of separation from the background. And if you want to, you can turn off all of your other lights and just use a rim light or a hair light and create a very mysterious feel in your portraits. Now, another way to create a mysterious feel in your portrait, and I'm gonna turn off my main light here, is to use a backlight. A backlight kind of creates a silhouette of your subject and anything moving around here, you can see the light being reflected on my hands and it looks pretty cool. And a backlight is absolutely great if you wanna use it in combination with another lighting method. Let's say you wanna use it with a little bit of Rembrandt or what I really like doing is using it with a little bit of split light so that you get that nice kind of halo around the outside of your subject's head and you get that extra little light. Or maybe you wanna push that light even farther behind your subject and use your main light as a little bit of a kicker kind of feathered off to the side over here. And now again, you have some really kind of mysterious, eerie looking lighting to use for your portraits. Now finally, let's talk about background lights. This is last, but certainly not least. And background lights, especially when you throw a little gel or a little color behind your subject, can really make your subject pop off the background. Backlights are really awesome to use, again, in combination with another type of light. Or if I wanted to, again, we can shut off our main light here and we can just see the silhouette that the subject creates. So those were a handful of portrait lighting terms and techniques that you can use to really take your portrait game to the next level. So be sure to let me know down below in the comments which one of these lighting techniques was your favorite. And that is all for this episode. Thank you guys for joining me this weekend. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and until next time, get out and go shoot.